Good morning, family. This is Ricky. Welcome to Hope for Today. And our prayer corporately for you this week is that every day will be a day of hope through the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Monday, everybody. You may be new to the Hope for Today community, but we got a certain kind of tradition on Monday mornings. And this is how it goes. Get up out your bed, okay? Wake up bend the knee and thank God for another day because you got breath today and that's a blessing. You got life today and that's a blessing. And I don't care what you're going through, at least you're alive to go through something. You are blessed. So I'm telling you what you and I are going to do this week, we're going to act like a thing is so, even though it ain't so, in order that it might be so because God said so. Who is ready to walk in the victory of King Jesus this week. God bless you. So excited about God's word and what we get to do this week together. We've been in Deuteronomy 6 and just been kind of walking through that and kind of been tilting our attention towards parenting, towards grandparenting. Indeed, many of you are great grandparenting. And even if you're not parenting, you're leading something. You're influencing someone. You're mentoring someone. You're a big brother. You're a big sister. You're a supervisor. You're an advisor. You're a counselor. You have the opportunity to bring a gospel parenting witness to somebody. And Moses is dealing with this in these passages concerning the legacy of the kingdom of heaven, the legacy of the word of God and passing that down on to the next generation. And we've been in verse 7. Uh, where he said, you shall teach them diligently to your children the laws of God and shall talk of them when you sit in your house or when you walk by the way. And let's just continue that thought into verses 7 and verse 8. And he says, and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise, verse 8, here it is, uh, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets uh, between your eyes. In verse 9, he says, you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. First question, what is them? He's talking about the laws of God, okay? The good news of the gospel for you and I as New Testament, New Covenant believers, right? The oracles of the Lord, the will of the Lord. He's saying it is to be so embodied in you, parent, so embodied in you, pastor and leader, so embodied in you, mentor, that watch this now, it becomes, hear it, not just a verbal, but a visible witness to your kids. Did you hear that? Because that's the ball game for this verse. He's saying they shouldn't just hear it from you verbally. They should see it in you visibly. It is a both and witness. Who am I talking to? They, they say that at the end of the day, you can hear it. But if you never see it, it'll never, you'll never become it. Right? We all get this. When it comes to kids, they can hear it all day. But if they never see it, they'll never become it. And sometimes we wonder why our kids aren't acquiescing to this message of the gospel and to the will of God for their lives. And maybe it's because our verbal witnesses of the gospel are overwhelmed by a lack of visible witnesses of the gospel. Now, that's an ouch, but you can still say amen. Sometimes kids don't get it till they see it. And the question is not so much if you're saying it, but if you're showing it. Pray, son. Pray, daughter. Trust God. And in the inside, they're unconsciously thinking, I don't see you doing that. Ooh, help me, Jesus, because this convicted me. They need to see it. And so Moses says here, verse 8, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. Now, this is funny because the Jewish people took that completely literally. In fact, in many Orthodox circles today, you'll go over in Israel, you'll see this. You go in certain Orthodox um, synagogues, you'll see this. They, they invented something called phylacteries. Phylactery is basically a leather box that's got a tassel and they would uh, kind of affix it to their wrist or to their garments. And literally inside this leather box would be a small parchment of our passage written down on it. The whole idea is that the word of God all to become something we can see in you. So here's my question, where's your phylactery? Now don't you dare go getting you a leather box and writing the way. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying it's one thing to have a verbal witness. It's another thing to have a visible witness. One of my mamas um, in the faith, uh, Nancy Holcomb, a sweet woman of God out in Memphis, Tennessee, 
uh, Nancy said that pretty much every morning she'd get up before her children and she'd go read her Bible in the living room where when the kids finally came down to the kitchen to the living room, they'd always have this visible witness of seeing mama in the word. And Nancy's so real, she would say many a day, you know, I'm just tired from the night before and been, you know, wrestling with all these kids. I'm just wore out and, you know, I'm just tired, don't feel like doing de devotion. I still wake up early and just act like I was reading. <laughs> Because the whole idea is that she understood verbal wasn't enough. It had to also be visible. So God's given you a company. God's given you a team of coworkers. God's given you some kids. God's given you some grandkids. And may we wrestle with this question today. Where are the areas in my life where they can see it? And God help me to show it today. And that's hope for today. It's going to be a good week. I'll see y'all next time.